The government of national unity is a farce. You know, when you say a sellout, this, is, this whole deal is a sellout deal. And I know that for comrades like in Balula and so on, when you say sellout, you had them. But you have sold out, comrade. You have sold the country to the Boers. Let me put it blunt. Let me tell you why. Yesterday, I mean, it, this is unbelievable. You know, South Africa, as my colleague Dan Koda would say, it's a movie, man. Yesterday, Zile says, in a straight face, are, no, 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 we want to impeach our Mapos away. Even if they, they brought the Palapala thing back, we want to impeach. This is the same Zile who, in October of 2023, when the Constitutional Court threw the Palapala matter of Ramaphosa out of court, said, this is the reason why this matter must be brought back to Parliament so that there can be accountability. So DA has joined the ANC in being a sellout, selling out to its own constituency who they promised to say, we are going to make sure that this government can account. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we are not interested. We cannot uh, impeach a president that we have just uh, uh, elected. On a platter of silver, like Judas selling Jesus, the DA has sold you out if you thought they were going to be different. There are birds of a feather who, because of ministerial posts, they are now going to sell you out of accountability regardless of the criminal nature of whatever it is that can be placed squarely in front of the president or any of his ministers they have made a deal and sold you out south africa that for an exchange of a few pieces of silver they will not hold this government accountable that's why you must ask yourself who is going to hold this so-called GNU accountable? His people are sellouts. The same sellouts who sold out the students of 76 and got police to shoot them. This time they are selling out 14 million people who are going to get hungry. They are selling out the 68% of youth who are unemployed. They are selling out this economy that is growing at 0%. For a few pieces of silver. South Africa, mark my words, we are headed for uncharted waters. If you are naive, you can clap your hands and say it's unity, it's everybody. Actually, it's not a government of national unity because it is unity to everyone. It's a quali grand coalition of the birds of the same feather who are destined to continue the status quo of this country that are seeing the black child suffering. We should pay some respect and tribute to the youth of 1976. You would remember, uh, as you saw in those uh, raunching scenes over there, that they were being tortured and butchered uh, by the apartheid regime because they wouldn't, didn't want Africans to be a medium of their instruction. But this comes in the context of Bantu education, where Fervurut had said with all the courage in the world that there's no need for black children to learn mathematics because what on earth are they going to do with it? This is the kind of temerity of the apartheid regime that occasioned that kind of rebellion uh, from the youth of 1976. And I can tell you now that with some of the people uh, who, who came out of this generation, uh, or who came even after this generation, they have put fervurt to shame. Tonight I host one of those people who have done so, who is now the CEO of one of the biggest utilities in our country, and if one dare say one of the most important utilities, uh, is a black young man who hails out of the Northwest and scales uh, right now, uh, the corridors of ESCOM. Dan, Dan Barokan is my guest here tonight. And uh, indeed, it is, uh, you know, without saying too many slogans, that alone is a tribute to what those youth of 1976 fought for. And as this curtain comes down, oh, by the way, I want to talk to you about uh, Izimpimpi.
people who are sellouts. By the way, some of what has happened there was because some of the sellouts actually only tell the police that, hey, these people are marching tomorrow, and the police mobilized and killed some of them. And we'll talk about that just a little later. But because the curtain is coming down on the sixth administration, I thought I would pay tribute to a few young people who have really been bright sparks of this administration. I know that we shout there about incompetence and, you know, just a lot of disappointing things that some of these people do. But I want to pay tribute specifically to a few of the ministers and some of the deputy ministers in this administration. One hopes that they will actually be promoted tomorrow when the president decides on who his cabinet is going to be. Butima Namela, the guy has been dedicated, he's been a deputy, I think he's specialized, he could give a workshop on how to be a deputy minister. He's been a very simple minister for so long that one wonders, but why is he not being made a minister? God help us that they don't return blatant demand uh, to that job. So Butima Namela, one of the bright spots of the sixth administration, as the curtain comes down on it tonight. Uh, Kumbuzo and Chabe, a young, bright, uh, and uh, holding a very, very important position of minister in the presidency. have also been minister of communications, articulate, uh, but also quite energetic, and uh, I, I believe very, very competent. So, Pumbuzo and Chameni, minister in the presidency, one of the bright spots of this administration. Now, of course, there's a uh, minister Kubai. I know that you will forgive her for painting her nails during the Nkandla inquiry. I think that's, that's history. Just look at what she's doing now with a human settlement portfolio, I think that she's one of the bright spots. Uh, you know, I think also with the tradition of the Youth League and what have you. And then you put a, a, a Pax Tau. What, what, you know, you know, sometimes the way we make decisions in a movement just baffles me. Why would you waste somebody with such talent as Pax Tau and make them a deputy minister of some innocuous portfolio? That guy should be the economics minister, one of the top ministers. He should be a minister of trade and industry or something serious, man. You know, this guy ran this, the biggest city here uh, in the continent successfully, uh, you know, getting A ratings and you name it. Then you take him and make him a deputy minister. Somebody's not even in cabinet, you know. So those are some of the bright sparks. And one hopes uh, that along with people like Pinky Kekana, of course, also, a, a, minister, a deputy minister in the presidency and others, they could, uh, you know, just take the best, just learn to deploy the best amongst us, uh, and not and just not just take uh, th those who are bad apples, you know. And one is happy to see the back of bad apples, like to us nice, bad apples like Clayton Ziman, the bad apples like Gwena Mantai, terrible. They should just retire, but of course with the kind of things that we do, it's very difficult for people to retire because they know nothing else. Please forgive them. These are people who have never retained their CVs in a long time. If you say they must retire, you're going to frustrate them. They won't know what to do. But, you know, last week's rant seems to have rubbed people the wrong way. But I'm sure you know by now that I wouldn't give a damn. The government of national unity is a farce. And it's important that those of us whose job is to tell the truth must tell it now and tell it even more persistently when people are trying to gag us from telling it. Just yesterday, I mean, you know, when you say a sellout, this, is, this whole deal is a sellout deal. And I know that for comrades like in Balula and so on, when you say sellout, you had them. But you have sold out, comrade. You have sold the country to the boss. Let me put it bluntly. Let me tell you why. Yesterday, I mean, it, this is unbelievable. You know, South Africa, as my colleague Dan Koda will say, it's a movie, man. Yesterday, Zile says in a straight face, or, no, 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 we won't impeach our mapos awaiting. Even if they, they brought the Palapala thing back, we won't impeach. This is the same Zile who, in October of 2023, when the Constitutional Court threw the Palapala matter of Ramaphosa out of court, said this is the reason why this matter must be brought back to Parliament so that there can be accountability. So DA has joined the ANC in being a sellout, selling out to its own constituency who they promised to say we are going to make sure that this government can account. 
are, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we are not interested. We cannot uh, impeach a president that we have just uh, uh, elected. On a platter of silver, like Judas selling Jesus, the DA has sold you out if you thought they were going to be different. They are birds of a feather who, because of ministerial posts, they are now going to sell you out of accountability, regardless of the criminal nature of whatever it is that can be placed squarely in front of the president or any of his ministers. They have made a deal and sold you out, South Africa. That for an exchange of a few pieces of silver, they will not hold this government accountable. That's why you must ask yourself, who is going to hold this so-called GNU accountable? His people are sellouts. The same sellouts who sold out the students of 76 and got police to shoot them. This time they are selling out 40 million people who are going to bed hungry. They are selling out the 68% of youth who are unemployed. They are selling out this economy that is growing at 0% for a few pieces of silver. South Africa, mark my words, we are headed for uncharted waters. If you are naive, you can clap your hands and say it's unity, it's everybody. Actually, it's not a government of national unity because it's unity to everyone. It's a quali grand coalition of the birds of the same feather who are destined to continue the status quo of this country that are seeing the black child suffering. But in the midst of all of that, we always have to see a silver lining. 